Deloitte predicts that in 2013, the era of abundant and strong user-generated password protection will more or less come to an end. Up until now, people created passwords, even for high-value applications like banking, secure in the knowledge that they were good enough. In 2013, a variety of tools will mean that good enough will not be good enough, and we could see losses of billions of dollars, and faith in the very security of online transactions could evaporate. Hackers will be able to gain access to our usernames and passwords and crack our accounts, dramatically increasing the vulnerability. But exactly how would that work? Um, with most accounts that I have, um, if I enter the wrong uh, password in three times, uh, then I get locked out. Well, this is actually a common way of looking at it. That's not what hackers do. They don't, they don't have your username and then try you know, a few million combinations on that, because as you say, it freezes out. But what does happen is that every website that has a password and a username does not, hopefully, store it in clear. They create a file that's encrypted through a technique called hashing, and that hashed file is kept inside the company. Sadly, sometimes those encrypted files make their way outside that company. Hackers gain access to them, but that hashed file is useless to them. It's deeply encrypted, so it's extremely challenging to take a properly hashed file and gain the usernames and the passwords. But how is it, though, that hackers can crack that hash file? Let's, let's use one example, uh, a strong password. Eight characters long, uppercase, lowercase, numbers and symbols. That's 6.1 quadrillion, 10 to the 15th, uh, combinations. How would they do that? Bunch of secrets. People reuse passwords from account to account to account. Average person has about 25 accounts, but only six different passwords. Finally, we are really bad at being random. We usually put the capital letter at the beginning of the word. We put the numbers at the end and in sequence. We base them on common words and names, and we don't use the full set of symbols. As a result, there are online dictionaries that hackers can use to try, instead of 6.1 quadrillion combinations, just the most common million or so passwords and in over 90% of cases, that's enough to gain access to an account. So that's 90% of cases, but are there any other ways in which hackers can get access to passwords or to hash files? It isn't just dictionaries. New hardware, taking uh, graphics cards, actually, that you would use for high-end computer games, combining a, a number, 8 to 12 of these graphics cards, means that for $12,000, I could create a device which instead of taking a year to crack a single eight character password could now be done in, true story, 5.5 hours. So what are the alternatives to us? I mean, can we just have longer passwords? Could I just have a 10 digit password? Because isn't that a lot more secure? 10 digit is quite a bit more secure, although still vulnerable to a dictionary attack. The problem is that getting users to just use longer, truly random passwords isn't going to happen. They just won't do it. As a matter of fact, on mobile devices, many users are going to four and six number-only passwords because they're easier to type on that small screen. Obviously, just trying to create stronger passwords is not the answer. So it may be other tools, things like multi-factor authentication, where uh, when I log in on a computer, I get a message to a smartphone that requires me. Physical tokens, maybe using things like our bank cards, which we always know where they are, to authenticate through an NFC phone. There's going to be a lot of different solutions, but the gist of the prediction is the days of short, secure passwords have almost certainly come to an end. So we're seeing the end of an era in terms of security, but we're seeing the start of a new era. So it's a different way of doing security in 2013.